Welcome to Learning Lua. Today we're going to look at passing and receiving arguments and parameters in and out of functions and how that works. Just to be clear, a parameter is defined as a variable in a function's definition. So in the example local function sample function, anything that I receive is referred to as a parameter. An argument is the data that is passed to the parameter from whatever the calling routine is or calling command. So in the example today, I'm continuing to use a external module to help clarify some of the use of parameters and arguments. In my module.lua, which we built in our last tutorial, uh, number 16, if you haven't seen that, I recommend looking at it. We have the creation of a table, and uh, in that table I have defined three additional functions. Each of these functions are receiving some type of data. In the first function I've got add, which we're receiving two variables. The second one I've got high, which we're receiving one variable. And the third function, which was not in our previous example, is twofer where I'm receiving two variables, or actually I'm receiving three parameters and returning the information from them. I'm actually returning four variables from that information. So let's take a look at how we can use these inside of an application. To begin with, I'm just going to load my external module, I'm calling it my mod, and we're going to pass it the letter A to high, and so in response we get high A. Very basic, we're sending one parameter and the module is returning the concatenated high with whatever we pass to it. So let's look at something a little bit more complex. In the second example we're going to create a variable called temp and pass it the argument B and of course this returns B and is stored in the variable temp and we can print temp and see the return on that. A little more complex is the twofer. Twofer is passing one, two, three, returns one, two, three, as we saw in our module, returning the ver first variable, the second variable, and the third variable. And then for the fourth parameter that is returned, we have v1 plus v2 times v3, which returns the number nine. So we're printing that out as it's returned. Now, if you have questions about how that can be returned to be used inside of a program, we can also do something a little bit more complex. We can set, create the variables a, b, c, d, and set that equal to my mod, which is passing the arguments, the number one, two, and three, and that will return stored in a, the value one, stored in b, the value two, stored in c, the third value that is returned from my module. And for the fourth one, which is the first two added multiplied by the third, we get D. If I did not pass back a value for one of these, it would have been treated as nil. So if I were to go in here and not return this portion, the where we're adding and multiplying as part of the module, we instead get back nil for D. So Lua automatically adapts for handling when additional information is not passed back. If we're declaring a value and nothing is set equal to it, it will automatically be declared as a nil value. So that allows us to take a look at how we can pass arguments into a parameter and return those parameters and be able to pass them back into multiple different types of variables. Another confusing part of working with arguments and parameters inside of Lua is tables. We are able to pass tables easily between our functions, but then working with them outside of that can be a little confusing. So I've created two functions inside of my routine here. The first one is just simply a simple sort routine. It's going to receive a table as my parameter one, and then simply sort that table, which will sort it into ascending value and then return that table inside the information. The second function that I've created is show table. Show table will receive the parameter, storing it as P2, and then does a generic for or a pair and shows the key and the value of the output from that information, just simply printing it to the screen. So I've created a table of various things, an unordered list, so that we can see it. We'll, we'll show how this works real quick. We're initially calling our show table, which passes the my table information. We've got the show table passing 
my table as my argument. Show table receives it as a parameter. Here's P2 and does a print of the key and the value and thus listing out the values in order as they were put into the system. If we call the table pass, my table, and it does not need to be called in this format. Um, I just simply set my table equal to table pass. Because we are passing, the way Lua works, because we are passing my table to the system, it's actually doing passing a pointer to the table. Those that are familiar with C programming know that that means that it's actually passing the literal table to P2, and so the argument is being passed into P2, and it is making any modifications made to p2 such as our sort the same modifications will happen to my table thus when we do a print on our show table after the sort and i show my table you can see that it does change the sequence or sort the table so from our original unsorted to our table after the sort my table was modified by the sort so we are ch actually changing the original arguments, not a copy of those arguments. And different programming languages handle this differently. In Lua, we're actually changing the original argument or the original variable that was passed. And just to show that it is also now stored in my new table, you can see that it is now my new table as well as this table. So exact same data stored in both my new table and my table after we do the sort. So let's take a look at one other really neat possibility that you can do with Lua. If you create a function that needs to accept an unknown number of parameters, you can pass or use the, the command of three dots in your parameter list. Putting three dots in the parameter list of the function tells Lua that you don't know how many parameters are going to be received. This allows you to do some very interesting things in this particular example. What I've done is I've created a variable called sum inside the function and then we're going to do an i pairs to walk through the list of variables that were sent to it and tell it to sum it. So Passing it the three dots that were received into I pairs tells it to send all variables to the I pairs uh, generic for loop. And we're just simply going to step through it, ignoring the index, and just simply add the value to the sum at each step. When it's done with the generic for loop, we can return sum and get the information. And as you can see in my examples here, I've called this function twice. The first time I'm passing it, six arguments, the second time I'm passing it two arguments, and getting different results for each one. So it's a nice little thing if you don't know exactly how many things you're, how many objects you're going to be getting in your parameters. You can use three dots in place of that. Hope that helps with understanding how passing arguments into parameters inside of functions works. If you have other questions or would like to see other examples, please leave it down in the comments. We have a lot more tutorials and lessons forthcoming. If you'd like to follow what's happening, you can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Brian Burton or Facebook at Burton's Media Group or follow us on our website, burtonsmediagroup.com. If you'd like notification through YouTube, hit the like or subscribe button. 